Okay, so welcome. This is a review for test one for fall 2023. Wow, time flies when you're having fun. Um, so what I'm going to do is I'm going to go through and work the exam that I gave during the summer of 2023. Um, the results were fairly good. Uh, I think the average was around 83 at uh, 100 and some students that didn't show up at all during the semester obviously didn't do very well. So anyway, so this is the exam. Uh, so problem one, create a vector x1 of values minus 3 to 2 pi using 12 increments. Use len space. Okay, so we'll do len linear space. We're going to name this x1 and then we'll do uh, len space as directed. Then it usually has an a. And the len space takes the starting point the ending point, um, which is 2 times pi and how, <laughs> excuse me, how many elements we want, which is 12. And we're, I, now we'll go ahead and display that. Part B is create the vector y1 results from the function y1 equals 4 times cosine 2 times x1. So we got uh, y1 is equal to... 4 times cosine of 2 times x1. And uh, hey, if you guys see me typing an error, yeah, scream out, slap me upside the head, say, hey, stupid, that's not supposed to be like this. You can't hurt my feelings. I have none. I'm married with children. Okay. Uh, next one is generate a logarithmically spaced vector L1 from point zero 0.01 to point. Uh, I don't know why there's a comma there for 100, but uh, from point zero 0.01 to 1. I think probably because I stole this problem from another test and it said 1,000 and I cut a zero off and left the comma. Um, okay, get back on track. Uh, generate a logarithmically spaced vector L1 from point zero 0.01 to 100. Equal to the length of array x1. Use the length function. <clears throat> okay, so we are going to go L1 is equal to log space. And log space requires that we use the log of the number as the input. So that's going to be a minus 2 and a 2. And then how many elements we want? We want the same number of elements in x as in x1. So we'll use the length of x1 for how many elements we want. And, oh, we're not, we're, we're going to display these. We're not hiding them. We want to see that we actually type something. Okay. Um, and just to make it pretty, we'll put some white space in there. Easier to read. Create an array Z with the three columns containing the values in X1, Y1, and L1, respectively. Now, it just says create an array. There's a couple of ways to do this. So, um, Option one would be to say that uh, z is equal to uh, x1, and we'll have to transpose it because it's a column or row vector. We need it to be a column, and y1 and l1. Or option two, um, and I gave credit for either option because it did not specify which way to do it. But had to say do this, then if you didn't do it that way and did it another way, I'd, I'd, I'd take 95 points off. Okay, maybe not 95, 93. Um, no, uh, we need Z, so we'll, it doesn't matter. We'll just do a, a, a Z2. Z2 will be using the table function. And that's going to have our variables of the X1. And again, you still want to put, uh, transpose those because uh, the rows, not columns, and L1. So either one of those is a valid reply uh, response to that that part. Uh, determine the number of elements in array Z. Okay, well then we'll just do a num L Z. It doesn't say assign it to anything, so I you know I, I can't force you to do something that. I didn't do that. Oh, because there's two of them. You're an idiot. Okay. Thank you. Here we go.
I was trying to take the table and not see. And then the final part of this question is determine the value of the sixth element in the ray Z. So we just say, what's the sixth element of Z? Cool. So now let's run it and see what we get. No red marks, no red marks. Crush fingers, no red marks. Don't stop. Did I forget to? Oh, I forgot to transpose my Y. Here we go. And, oh, I forgot to transpose two of them down here. See? I just seen if you guys were watching. No, okay. I screwed it up. Minus 20 points for me. <clears throat> so either one of these would be a valid answer to, the, to those questions. Um, so, uh, num L tells us that there's 36 elements in that uh, array and element that number six has the value of, and it determined element six by starting in the first column and going down six, one, two, three, four, five, six. So if it said element 16, then it would go down to the bottom of the column one and then go over to column two and come down. Let's see, there's 12. 13, 14, 15, 16. So 16 would be 2.3706. That's just a little FYI. A little extra for you guys that showed up. Of course, if it's just for you guys that showed up, I'll have to edit it up when I create the video. But okay, I won't. Any questions on, on problem one? No? Okay. Problem two continues problem one, so we won't clear our variables. Um, we'll leave uh, our workspace filled with L1, X1, C1s, and whatnot. So, but it does state here to redo X1, increasing the values to 100. So I guess technically we could, um, but we'll do, uh, X1 is equal to, and this time uh, we're gonna use Linspace. I think we used Linspace last time, linear spacing. Um, then we're going to go from zero to two times pi, and we want 100 elements. That's the reason we do that is because it gives you a nice smooth plot instead of a jerky one with only 12 d data points. But we're going to suppress it this time. We don't want to see it. And then we want to create all these y's. So uh y1 is equal to 3 times cosine of 2 times x1 and not 9 i just i'm, I'm i i seen that I, I i get back to it okay and we're not multiplying any arrays together so we don't need the element operator uh, y2 is equal to not 9 oh wait a minute we got to do the 7 sign first Seven times. Oh, I should just went straight to bed. Three times x one, and we'll suppress that one. And y three is equal to four times. Um, make it look pretty. Uh, cosine of point five times x one. And we'll suppress that. Okay. And now it says to plot all three of them on the same XY plot. Um, there's a couple ways to do that. I'm going to do the way I like best. Um, you can do hold on and then uh, redo the plot command three times, but I'm lazy. So I'm going to do one plot command. And the first line should be X1 versus Y1, Y1. And it should be blue, and I believe blue is a uh, uh, B. Um, and it should have a dot dash dot dot dash um, dot dash is minus dot and asterisk for a marker. Okay, so there's our first line. Our second line should be. Um, 
x1 comma y2 comma and then this time we are magenta which i believe is m and we want to have a dotted line that's a colon oops wrong side i hate when it does that i really really hate when it does that and then um five pointed star what is a five pointed pentagram See, I don't know all of those, so that's where I have to use the help window inside of MATLAB, and we just do help plot. And it come, we come up here, and right here it tells us pentagram is a P. Well, that makes sense, you idiot. Okay, and then... The third line is going to be x1, comma, y3, and it is supposed to be green, and a dashed line, um, uh, a green dashed line. Okay, what's a dashed line look like? A uh, dashed line is a minus, 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 and... Um, and plus sign for the markers. And then it's got one extra little gotcha get you on it, a line width of two. So then we have to come out and start another one and then put in um, line width and comma two. That's all in chapter five in plotting. Um, I hope I did that right. Okay, and then it should include a title. So we'll do a title. Um, uh, anyway, I don't, I don't care what you label these as. Just as long as you know how to do titles and labels. And it wants X labeled. You gotta put the X first, you stupid. Don't call me that. It hurts my feelings. Uh, that's gonna be uh, X. That's a, a, a um, and then a Y label is um, um, some trig function. And it wants a grid. And it wants a legend. And here we're going to do a, uh, the first line is y1, which is uh, 3 cosine 2x. Did I do a, I thought I did a single. Not that one, that one. I mean, I think it'll work with either or, but they're trying to get us to focus on using the single quotation mark. And the second one is 7 sine 3x, 7 sine 3x, and the final one is 4 cosine half x, 4 cosine x divided by 2. And then we hit the uh, go button and say, I hope it works, 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 I hope it works. Now, if you did this by doing the plot of this one and use the hold on and then plot this one and use it still with hold on, plot that one, that would be totally acceptable. Oh, come on. I know you can plot it. It should get something for my troubles. Oh, look at those stars. Aren't those stars just gorgeous? I mean, they make you want to say, oh, aren't that pretty? Okay. Any questions on plots? Hey, Christopher. Okay, no questions on problem two. We will move on to problem three. Okay, so problem three is worth 15 points. I guess that means each section is worth five points each. I did that math in my head without using MATLAB. You should be impressed. I'm not, but you should be. It's been a long week, and it's just getting started. 
Okay, create an array of three common trigonometric functions, sine, cosine, tangent, for angle 0 to 2 pi with 16 values each. Display your array, array with five columns total. Okay, so here again, um, I'm only going to do the one method, but there are the two different methods for displaying. There's using the table command, and I'll, I'll do the table command down below, and then there's just the straightforward creating an array. I'll use the table command this time so that we can put headers on top of our columns. Okay, so first we need to have uh, tangent angles from 0 to 2 pi. So 0 to 2 pi means that they're radians. So radians is going to equal uh, lin space whoop, 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 uh, from 0 to 2 times uh, pi, and there's no u in pi. I know that. There's no me in anything. Um, uh, 16 elements, and we're going to suppress that. And then we also want a, a degrees column. Um, second column is in degrees right there. See, I remember, because I, I worked this exam before, I first because I wanted to make sure I didn't make too many mistakes. Um, okay, so degrees, there's several ways that you can get the degrees. The, um, I mean, you can go uh, radians times uh, 180 divided by pi. And if you don't remember that one, you, there's always the simple rad 2 degrees of radians. And that'll do all that conversion for you. And you don't make a mistake like I generally do because I are an idiot. A little girl named Bridget who likes to play with midgets. Um, I do have a daughter named Bridget. She's pregnant. My first grandchild. Woohoo! Yay. Um, okay, so now we got to do the third part here of columns of sine, cosine, and tangent. Um, the one thing that a lot of students will do is uh, they'll say that sine is equal to the sine of. Uh, uh, I, I, okay, so if we, if I'm using sine, then I got to use radians. Oh, and that just showed me that I need to do something else here. You noticed? I don't know if you noticed that when that this popped up. Uh, see down here, it's got all of the stuff from the first questions. We don't want those no more. So what we need to do is start out down here with a clear. That'll clear out all these variables over here so you don't get into, into trouble. It don't do much while you're writing now, but when you run your problem. Don't crash on me, you kumquat. It's thinking. Oh, there we go. So we want sign of radians for that one. Uh, and, but, you know, so now if you ever try to come back and use the sign function, it doesn't work because you've changed it from a function to a variable and assigned it these values. So make use different variable names. Um, so capitalize sign is a variable now and not a function. Um, uh, we can go cosine is equal okay we're going to use since how we have the degrees function variables we're going to use the degree functions do you know how to do that i do i'll show you if you don't um it's coast with the d the d says to use degrees so if we use degrees it'll work so without the d is your radians and with the d is using degree variables in case you were unfamiliar with that and then the tangent, it doesn't matter which one we use. It's the same thing. You know, we'll do, um, so we got radians here. <clears throat> okay. Um, okay, we got all our variables. Now we need to make a, a, an array. And we're going to use the table function. So we're going to say, uh, I don't know, we'll just call it data is equal to uh, some table. Won't we are going to give it our our, our variables, um, which is going to be radians in the first column, uh, and we've got to transpose that so that it's a column vector, not a row vector, and make sure that we uh, transpose all of them this time instead of going back and have to rechange them. So the next one is columns, uh, degrees, and then capitalize our sign and with no O, transposed. Um, our coast transposed and our tan transposed. 
Okay, now here's where we add column headers. Uh, first thing we got to do is tell it that we're adding column headers. So we put in here uh, variable uh, names. Once send in squirrely brackets, we put in the names that we want at the top of the Um, and I, do those have to, yeah, I think those have to be in, um, I think, I don't, I think, do they have to, I think, I think they have to be, I think, sorry, I'm cheating. Yes, I was right. They need to be in, uh, single quotation marks, single quotation marks, single quotation marks. You had it there and you changed it because you're stupid. No, I'm not. I'm just tired. And then we have degrees. Um, now, something I did when I was taking the test um, before this was there is a way that you can put the Greek symbols in in your your outputs, but it doesn't work in the tables. Yeah, it's kind of sucks. Um, I'll show you that uh, in in a plot that's coming up. Um, uh, so we have degrees, then we had a sine of x. Oops. And then this is the cosine of x, and we need. And the tangent of x. And again, you did it again because you're stupid. And end with a curly bracket. And now we should have a really cool looking table. Where'd my mouse go? Somebody get some cheese. And I'm going to save this just so that it doesn't, if it does crash on me, we don't have to start over from scratch. And now we're going to run. Do, 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 do. SOS. Oh, ha, <laughs> ha. Cost. I was sending out this help signal. Help me, I'm lost. And there we have our nice little cool little table with our headers on top. Riggings, degrees. Any questions? Comments? Wants, needs, desires? Okay. I don't blame you. I don't have any questions either. Okay, so now we are going on to the next problem, which is problem four. Okay, this one here, I should be able to show you how to do. Uh, no, uh, I don't know. There's one here coming up where we have to plot. But, but you know, there's no reason why we can't. Um, okay, problem number four is create the plot of this function by creating an anonymous, an anonymous, anonymous, anonymous function. So if you don't do an anonymous function, uh, you won't get full credit for this, assuming this was in your exam. Um, so first we're going to create a function. Um, we'll just call it f. And we start with a at sign and our variable inside of parentheses. And then we, we cheat. Oh, you're not going to let me cheat, you kumquat. Okay, no cheating. Uh, it's minus times x dot raised to the 3, and not minus plus 3 times x dot raised to the 2, plus somebody really liked 3s when they wrote this problem. Plus six. Okay, is that right? Minus three x cubed plus three x squared plus three x. Okay. So there's our anonymous function. Um, so it says the plot. It doesn't say use f plot. So um, I, uh, to be completely honest with, and I did this, I used the f plot, but we can do it without doing the f plot. Uh, between, so we'll, we'll do it without an f plot. We'll create our theta. That way we can use theta in our, our, uh, theta equals, uh, we'll go minus two by, we'll use lots of data points to three. Lots of data points. And then, uh, y is going to equal f of our theta. What the theta, man? 
Oh, look at all those this water little pots you just put in there because you're stupid. Okay, so now we're going to make a plot of functions. So we're going to do plot, and we're going to go um, um, on our theta, be our x, x, if you spell it right, our x axis, and our y will be, and we'll just, I don't want y3, I cleared that. Go away, I don't want you. And then we'll do a title. And then on our X axis, X, X label, we're going to do theta, but we're going to do the Greek symbol. And to do that, you use the backslash and the, the symbol. And that'll plot out a theta instead of um, the word theta. Y label, I hope, uh, is uh, going to be F of theta. Nope. Let's do our backslash, backslash theta. Okay, so the problem says X. I don't like X's. I want thetas. Because I can, that's why. Okay, let's see what happens. Boom, random function. F of theta and theta. See, isn't that cool? Say, yeah, man, that's just mind-blowing. Okay, anybody go to Comic-Con this weekend? Okay. Mind on target here. These guys want to go back to bed. I don't know. So do I. Okay. Any questions on our anonymous function? Okay. Oh, here we got. Now we're going to write a user defined function. Uh, the hyperbolic sign oh. functions is. Oh, yes. Sorry, on the last question, it yes. said mark the x axis at oh, y yeah. equals zero. I didn't finish it. Good catch. Okay, right. Sorry, you're right. I forgot that. So we're going to do a hold on. And it wants, it said to do the uh, x axis at y equals zero with a red dashed line from zero to three. So we're going to do a plot. And our x is going to go from 0 uh, to, to and 3. Und. Our y-axis is going to go from 0 and 0. So there's our, two, our, our vectors that we're... And then it wants it to be red and dashed. Where to go? 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 There we go. So there's your red line from zero to three, and fast. And and thanks for pointing that out because yeah, that was something I was I really wanted to show because there was a homework problem uh, that basically did the same thing that was a little confusing to some. This one was easier in the homework because the homework you had to do it based off of data that you, you generated. This one, everything was given to you uh, that, you know, it was zero to three at zero. So I knew the, all the points. So cool. Way to keep me straight. And I guess, you know, if you really wanted to, oh, we should technically do a hold off in case we ever do another. Oh, there's no P in hold. <laughs> Depends on how long it's been since you've been to the bathroom. Uh, you pulled off. Um, and we could do a, a, a GERD. So if you show you that it's actually on zero, it doesn't call for it. But I don't, I don't penalize you for doing more than it asks for. But you got to do what it does ask for. Okay, now on to the hyperbolic function. So it wants us to use the above definition for the hyperbolic sign. Write a user-defined function called sine h to calculate the hyperbolic values of x. 
So that comes down at the very bottom of the script, right down here. And the very first part of a function is the word function. Um, that tells MATLAB that, hey, this is something that the user is going to create, and everything after that to the end is part of the function. So if you want to tell it um, what the output of the function is going to be assigned. We want to tell it the name of the function and what is being passed to it. In this case, we're going to pass to it X. Okay. Uh, this problem is really, really simple for this function. We just need to do um, the exponent of uh, e to the X minus e to the minus X divided by 2. Um, so as far as the function goes, we just have our output is equal to um, exponent of X minus... Uh, exp to the minus x and all that divided by 2. And we're going to suppress the output so we don't have to look at it. So for that function, oops, old. Yeah, it was kind of old. Um, that's all you need is that one one line of calculation. Um, other other functions, you know, you'll, you'll be more intense. Um, generally, if you're passing two variables of different sizes, you want to use mesh grid inside your function to bring them together rather than forcing the user to do that before sending it because uh, users are lazy. Um, well, I'm lazy. Um, so that, that, that's the extent of this function. And then we come back up here to part five and test our function with size. For, that should be hyperbolic sign of 5. So test it. We just call our function. We pass it value of 5. Now here it wants us to use um, the um, uh, F plot. I knew there was an F plot in here, but I, I used it prematurely last time. Um, so we'll use it properly this time. Um, so we're going to use the F plot. You should remember this from chapter five. And it takes a function, which is sine H. Won't it takes the interval to which you wish desires to not curly square, um, to, uh, take your, to plot your, and there we have it. Um, and then and annotate your graph appropriately. So, plot uh, title is um, where we want um, um, x label is uh, x. <clears throat> no, yes, no, and our y label is. Um, um, X. And for me, that's enough to annotate. I mean, if you want to do grid, grid, you can. There's no reason to do a, a legend because you're the, that's the only problem in there. So there's our plot. Is there anything else? Oh, there is more. Determine. Oh, this, the, you know, when they, somebody else wrote this problem. And I'm like, uh, okay, so determine the smallest value of this function can have for this range. At what point does x in the minimum value occur? Well, it's a, it's a well duh moment. It's going to be when x is minus 5. Uh, it says, do not just look at the data generated. So the only way I, I, I don't know how they intended for this to be done, but I... Technically, I didn't even grade this part because it doesn't make any sense of why you'd want to do this. But I, when I worked this exam, I just said that x equal, um, uh, what, minus 5 by 1. Actually, we don't need to buy 1 to 5. Uh, and then I did uh, uh, y equals the sine of x. And, you know, one good thing about this is it does tell you, um,
gives you a chance to use your finding the time that something occurs. Um, X equals X of, come on, hit the right button. So we found the minimum value for the sine of X during that interval uh, by saying the minus, you know, minimum of that. And then at what location, then we we'll go back to here to find out what the value is. And if it's not minus five, I'm going to turn off my computer and go to bed. That's, that's all there is to it. If, if, oh, so, if you did something like that, that's great. Uh, if you find an easier way to where I don't have to type so many keys, let me know, and I'll, I'll start teaching it that way. Okay. Are we good? Okay, problem number six. Create a vector. Oh, here's where we get to use mesh grid. Woohoo. Yeah, we like mesh grid. Woohoo. Woohoo. Okay. Silliness. Over. Done. No, it's not. It's still a video. Okay. Create a vector. Okay. First off, we're going to clear so we don't mess up our stuff with previous. And let's go ahead and get rid of that stuff anyway to begin with. Okay. So we're going to create a vector of X from, uh, uh, let's uh, lo use linear space command. From minus four to four with 500 elements. And we'll definitely suppress those. And look at that. We're going to make it the same numbers, only they want us to use mesh grid. So they said instead of going from four to negative four with 500, we're going to use 750 numbers. Wow. That's a lot of numbers. Okay. And then use mesh grid to make them the same size. Okay. I'll do that. Uh, so to do that, we use a square bracket. You can create new variables if you want by changing the names. If you just want to overwrite your existing ones, uh, use the same names. That just means that the original uh, assignment, like on, on lines 110, 111, are gone. But we're not going to use them for anything again anyway. Oops, there's an SH in there before you get into your GRID. Mesh grid of X and Y. And we all know what mesh grid does is it takes two very two arrays of various different lengths and meshes them together and creates the same number of rows and columns and makes one all rows, makes the other columns. And yet it's really cool if you plot it out and look at it. It's really, I guess, kind of coolish. Anyway, but now they're the same size so that when we come down here and try to multiply them all together, it'll work. Okay, so now part B is calculate R and Z. R is equal to the squirt. You forgot the Q and squirt of uh, X dot raised to the 2 plus Y dot raised to the 2. And we'll suppress that. And our Z is equal to the sine of 2 times R. All dot divided. Why do we have to dot divide? Because it's dividing by an array, and you can't do that. It's like dividing by zero. It can't be done, so we have to use a dot when we're dividing. Right answer. You get a gold star. Cool. Um, I am tired, guys. Sorry. I'll try to stop. I quit being so stupid. I'm trying. I'm trying. Um, so hopefully I did that right. Sine two r r plus one. Okay, z z r's. Okay, I don't see any errors. Okay, so here we go. Here we learn on um, sub plots. Okay, this says using sub plots, but we don't teach sub plots anymore. We use the tile layout. Let's see next tile. Um, so I expect it to be done that way. Um, because if you're learning the sub plots, and then that means you're working out of a book that prior to the 6th edition, and uh, the syllabus states that we will work only the 6th edition. Um, so anyway, so we're going to start by saying that T is equal to, not TR, T, T is equal to tiled layout. And I want a 2 by 2. And why did you start out with assigning it to T? Anybody know why I started out assigning that to, to the very T? 
Oh. Oh, glass everywhere. Bare feet. Oh, ick. Oh, oh I want to get done with this. We'll just surgically remove any glass that comes in while I'm doing it. Um, oh, there's my girl. Where, where's that from hiding? Me and I was looking for that the other day. Uh, your mom has it over to her mom's house. Okay. I'll just get the glass out from where I was sitting so I don't... Okay, sorry for the interruption. Okay, so I'll show you why here at the end of this why, why I sent, signed that value to T. Um, okay, so now, and then we want to do a, a, a next tile. So that gets us set up to do our first plot. Our first plot is going to be a surface plot. So we do a surf of X, Y, and Z. And title is going to be surface plot. And it says, don't forget titles and labels. And, you know, well, okay, so we're going to cheat here in just a minute. This is going to be X. And what's silly is if you don't do labels on some of these, it defaults to these anyway. But we're going to do them anyway because we were told to. Uh, Z label is Z and then we're just going to borrow all this so we can use it three more times instead of having to type all that out again because we know how to do it. If you can do it once, you can do it four times. Okay, so the next one is going to be mesh. So we're going to do a mesh plot of our X, our Y, our Z, not a four. And then we're just going to come down here and Rewrite that to mesh, and then everything else is there. How hunky dory is that? That was cool. I never would have thought of that. Oh, I do because I'm lazy. Okay, next plot is a contour plot. Contour. Um, X, Y, Z. Oh, I could capitalize that. Keep contour plot, and then the last one is a contour 3D plot. Um, so I don't remember seeing this in the text in our homework reading, but it's just contour three X comma Y comma Z. Not a V, a control V. <laughs> control V. There you go. I need a cadet. I need a kid. A contour three D plot. Okay. And now we get into why we signed a tile layout to a variable called T. We're going to do another title, if we can spell it right. There's two T's, one L, an I and E. And this time we're going to start with a T. That tells us to go to the um, the handle that we created up above and pull it out and make this an overall title. Um, um, uh, I don't know if I used this one already, but that don't matter. Okay, so there's a whole bunch of plots here. And then we're going to run this, and we're going to get one picture with four plots in it. Each one will have an individual title, and the overall figure will have a title. <gasps> what? Oh, you, oh, dang. Yeah, see, you guys didn't tell me. See, see what, you know what happened here? See, they're all in the one spot. That's because I forgot. I forgot to do the next tile. I was so worried about making sure I got the, the, the plot stuffs right. I forgot to get the subplotting right. Oh, we got to have two T's. But I have an excuse. I only have two functioning brain cells, and I don't remember a lot. Text, text, what? Textile. We're not doing freaking, okay. How about next tile? Idiot. Hey, okay, I'm missing a plot. Where's my last plot? Why are you still thinking? Next tile, contour three. It plotted it before when it was wrong. Ah, there we go. 
So there's our four plots with our XYZ labels, our individual plot labels, and an overall plot label. Cool. Any questions, comments? See, I actually make these mistakes as a learning tool to help you guys learn. Okay. Well, that's what we're going to go with. Yeah. That's what we're going to go. That's what, that's what makes me sleep at night. Okay. If there's no questions on this problem, we'll go to the last one. And ooh, we're 45 minutes into this and I lied. So, but I talk too much. That's the problem. I talk too much. Okay. So we're going to start off with a clear out everything okay so here we have uh the national association of stock car and racing is an american-owned family operated business started by bill france senior in 48 the load of the average speeds pole position winners since 2007. use the data to find the minimum maximum speeds in years which they occurred you must use max min functions okay so we're going to cheat because to sit there and write all that data in one at a time is going to take forever and I'll guarantee you I won't get it right. So we're going to cut this, but that's done as text. I know, but see in here, we can highlight all that and come up here and say, no, that's not text. That's code. And then come over here and chink, 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 chink. No, no chink. We're going to have a closing bracket. Ooh, and I need a starting bracket up on top. And a starting bracket here, and then just to make I like I like my things to line up. So boom, 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 and I guarantee you, for me, this was a lot quicker than trying to copy all that data down and making it right. Okay, so now we want to find um, um, what what are we looking for? Oh, max max average speed. So we'll go uh, max speed and its location. Whoa, that was so bad. Um, it's going to equal max of, uh, and now we just want column two. So we want all the rows from column two because we don't want the max year. The max year will always come out in 2017. Now that's kind of funky. It says that. This is since two thousand. Oh, since two thousand seven to two thousand seventeen. Wow, is this problem that old? Wow, it could be. I don't know. Uh, so uh, uh, the max year year is going to be uh, data, and we'll look at all of the data in column one and. Um, and location. Is that going to work? Oh, no, because we get. Oh. Uh oh. Oh, okay. I know what, I know what the problem is. I know what the problem is. Sorry. I, I'm, 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 I need to look in, in, in. Yeah, I need to look in column. Don't, don't do me. Uh, okay, I know that this will work, but that's not why I want it. Not that. You come quad. Um, location is going to just go down column one anyway. Ow. Ow. I got glass in my foot. But why wouldn't. I, 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 I think we'll, we'll try it on the, on, on the, on the, on the men here. Because I, I think I know how to. Uh, so our men's speed. And its location is equal to min of data of all the rows in column two. And min year is going to be in looking at the data in um in the location in column one. That's what we should have done. What? Don't give me that. Oh, this is supposed to be all the rows in all the. There we go. Locate. 
What? Oh, because you can't spell. That's why, because you're stupid. There we go. Anyway, I sure made a mess of that problem. That was the easiest problem on all the freaking test. That's because you're tired. And that, my friends, it was exam one uh, for summer of 2023. Uh, any questions? Anything you want me to go back over and